Well, as if the City of Melbourne didn't have enough going on already with the construction protests now into their third day, a 5.8 magnitude earthquake struck Victoria around 9.15 this morning, centred around Mansfield and Mount Buller in Victoria's northeast, sending tremors through large parts of southeast Australia and causing damage to buildings in the Melbourne CBD. Now, the quake originated at a depth of 10 kilometres and was felt for around 20 seconds. There were reports of movement as far north as Sydney and as far west to Dubbo in New South Wales. It was the largest earthquake to be felt in Australia since 1997. But let's find out more. We swapped the epidemiologist for a seismologist tonight. Joining me is Wayne Peck from the Seismology Research Centre in Melbourne. Thank you for your time. So this quake has had a very wide geographical impact What's that due to? Well, uh, it was felt over a very large area. The Certainly some of the more distant reports of people feeling it uh, as far as Sydney and even Adelaide are uh, generally from... Uh, ..in uh, situations where they're more likely to feel an event, so at the top of tall buildings. Um, a magnitude... This is getting close to a magnitude 6, so it, it's kind of... Uh, felt out over the area we would normally expect it to be felt. Um, but certainly it depends a lot on what you're doing, whether you feel the earthquake. So I've recently spoken to some people in uh, Woods Point who were very close to the epicentre, but because they were driving in a four-wheel drive over rough roads, they didn't feel the event. Oh. Because lots of us are in lockdown uh, and at home in quiet environments, it's been widely felt. Now, this part of Victoria, is it a known earthquake zone at all? Uh, uh, relatively speaking, for for Victoria, uh, it is a reasonably active area. So on a world scale, it's certainly not very active. But a, a rough analogue for activity anywhere in eastern Australia is how mountainous is it? So it's right in the middle of the Victorian Alps, so you can expect that compared to other areas, certainly out towards uh, Mildura, say, or in uh, central Australia, where you don't have the same topography, you generally don't have the same amount of hazard. Yeah, that was the lucky part. It wasn't centred around a city. I think of 5.6 magnitude earthquake in Newcastle. Uh, that tore that city apart. It wasn't centred around a city. They were very, very lucky. But... As for magnitudes, when was the last that we had one at 5.8? Uh, so we haven't... That's actually the largest event that we've ever recorded in Victoria. Um, we've got recorded events going back to probably the early 60s or so was when the first instruments were set up in Victoria. There were some very early instruments actually set up at Melbourne Observatory uh, around 1890s, 1900s, but right. those events were more focused at looking at distant earthquakes and they actually did a very poor job of recording local events. So since we've had good instrumental recordings, this is the largest that we've had on the land in Victoria. Now, I get regular, and this tells, tells you what a nerd I am, but I get regular um, emails from the Seismological Centre. I've noticed tectonic movement today in New Zealand, Chile and Japan, are they linked at all? Uh, it's very hard for us to draw a mechanism that links events around different parts of the world. We do know that earthquakes cluster in time and space, but tying down events internationally with events locally is really difficult. Right. Um, and there are a lot of events every day. We have events around the world most of which we don't hear about or don't get into the media because no one is injured or they're, they're, uh, they're at, at depth at which they won't do any damage. And finally, how long should Victorians brace for tremors? We will have uh, certainly have aftershocks for this event for weeks to months, but most of those after the first week or so most of those events will be too small for humans to feel. We'll be picking them up on our instrumentation. 
but the most likely outcome is that the uh, aftershocks will continue to ramp down to a point where most people won't be able to feel them even in the epicentral area. Okay, very interesting, fascinating stuff. Wayne Peck, thank you for your time. Pleasure.